dude, it's so rad. It's crazy, dude. It's so cool. 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 So so cool. So I first went to the Grand Canyon maybe about seven years ago. You know, I had seen the Grand Canyon before as a kid, but never like that. I just couldn't believe the beauty and the magnificence of it, and it really opened up my eyes. It was, it was truly amazing. When the opportunity came up to return to the canyon, I thought a way I hadn't seen it before was with the perspective of somebody that has a really close cultural connection to it. Brandon Dugay is this amazing young activist, author, runner, photographer, filmmaker, who's actually been doing a lot to advocate for indigenous representation in running. He comes from the Navajo Nation. He's part of the Diné people. In doing all this work, he got on Hoka's radar. They were really excited to make him an ambassador for the brand. He is a very selfless person, and I thought he would be a perfect person to help broaden my perspective on a place that I love so much. All right, Alan, well, welcome to my home, to my backyard where I kind of grew up and where I was raised. I'm stoked to be here. I mean, like this environment, this area is just so cool and I don't know, it's amazing, so. On the reservation, all over, each hogan or house has the main door, the entrance. They're all pointed to the east. So when the sun rises, back then they didn't have any doors or anything. They just had either a blanket or nothing. Traditionally, the Navajo people start their morning off with a prayer and then either a run or, you know, a physical activity that leads them to the east. And, you know, they say the gods, the creator is out there when the sun rises and, you know, you show them that they're, you're awake. This was the first Hogan that was ever put in this area. And this is where my dad, where he was raised. You can see it's uh, kind of built a little differently. And yeah, this is like the traditional Navajo Hogan, so. It is uh, 5.40 a.m. Excitedly, I changed into my running shorts and my running kit, so able to see my breath. So it's a little bit of a cold start, but the canyon's an interesting place. You know, it's the mountain upside down, so it's going to be really cool to kind of gain a little bit of temperature as we get down there, especially as the sun starts to come up a little bit more. So just got to the trailhead and so did the sun. So feeling really, really stoked to get out here. Feeling lucky, feeling grateful, feeling excited. All good things. Stoke level is high. Thank you for being out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, yeah. totally. I'm excited to be out and yeah, it's always a good day when you're in the canyon, so. Yeah, just so curious to like, you know, spend some time with you and hear about your experience in the canyon as somebody that lives like close by and like, you know, what your connection is to it, so. What was your first time out here? When I was like maybe 10 or 11, my mom and dad, you know, they would always come out here and they would do their hikes with family relatives. And it just became a thing where, you know, we would do a hike every month and then we would build up to like the big Grand Canyon hike with the family and we'll do the rim to rim. And it's not just, you know, me and my parents, it's me, my parents. and all of their relatives and you know it's a big huge thing and uh seeing runners run through the canyon i'm just like that would be fun i mean you know it's always cool to see how fast you can go <laughs> especially when you were younger i was always ahead of my parents by like two hours and i would be at the top waiting for them and you know i'd go down about a mile to two miles at 10 o'clock at night getting them out and uh yeah it's just awesome to come back and uh can't wait to share this experience with you and we'll have uh, some memories on there so yeah yeah that's cool that you get to think of the people i think of the people i spend time with and then yeah now you'll be one of those people so yeah thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure thank so. you yeah you ready i'm ready yeah let's warm up yeah let's get to the kid in a little bit yeah <laughs> see y'all yeah we got a light race Growing up with my parents telling me all these stories 
of Hopi and the Navajo people, you know, I had that knowledge behind it. <laughs> it keeps me grounded with running. It, it, it motivates me, you know, when I'm at my hard times. That's where I dig down. Yeah. I think about what our ancestors did back then and how, how much harder it was for them and how much they didn't quit. And like, then why should I quit, you know? Yeah. yeah. So. Just in case you needed help deciding if you're too hot, <laughs> you should ask yourself that question first. I just love walking by like, I wish somebody understood me. <laughs> Wait a minute, I am yeah. too hot, you know? <laughs> just came down Bright Angel, and yeah, we're on our way to the Tonto, which is rad, and it's got lots of memories. For me, I'm excited to make more memories with Brandon. And we've been cruising. We've been moving, yeah. yeah we've been moving. Like, yeah, it, it feels like we're, like, we can talk comfortably. It's rad. We've been in the shade the whole time. Like, the day hasn't got hard yet. No, not, <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Yeah. Feel the heat. Yeah. yeah. Crossing the heat threshold. It's the sun beautifully peeking over that. Time to put on oh, the shades, huh? Yeah. So how long has your family been out here? A long time. They've been out here for generations. You know, my dad's side of the family, they have a lot of history out in this area as far as, you know, our relatives being a part of big things that have changed who we are today as Navajo people with the long walk and tragic activities that happened. You know, a lot of it was kind of either through this area or done in and around this area. And of course, with my family relatives living out here, you know, they were a part of that, so. So can you share a little bit about like your running journey? I've heard you talk about previously about like how running is important culturally to you, but how did it personally like affect you? And like, what was the bug, I guess, that bit you with running? Growing up on the reservation um, and being taught to, you know, kind of greet the creator, you know, that was something that I saw people do. I saw my um, Nully, my Nelly lady, which is my dad's mom. I saw her do that. She would wake me up and, you know, we would start our mornings off with a prayer. And it's either a walking or a jogging or a running towards the east. And it kind of just became, you know, natural to just want to go out and just kind of explore more. And seeing runners in the canyon, I'm like, this is insane. I mean, yeah. <laughs> what better way of, you know, going down to the canyon, running down there, and I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the journey of trail running, you know, going out the door and just seeing different landscapes from waterfalls to, you know, the desert to the mountains, um, running up to snow. It's, you, can, you see it all, all in, all in one long run. And to me, that's something that was like, it was, it's just awesome, so. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. 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 yeah! yeah! So cool. This is awesome. Woo! Unreal. Just got down to the Colorado River. Really, really excited to be down here at the bottom of the canyon. How rad is it to think that people have been running along this river for thousands and thousands of years and learn a lot more about Brandon and his journey, his stories. Pretty stoked. That looks nutritious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we are at Phantom Ranch. Got some lemonade here. I got just under 14 miles. So we're gonna cruise along the uh, canyon for a while and then get to Ribbon Falls, which I'm excited. We just saw a sign that says the bridge is out and we're gonna have to cross the river at our own risk, which is exciting. So hopefully we'll get to cool down a little bit more. Feeling groovy. I'm feeling groovy. Dude. Slow down, you're going too fast now. You gotta make the moment last now. Simon and Garfunkel, 
Get the f yeah, out of here. As your platform starts to rise a little bit more, like, uh, how do you see your role in talking about Native experience and especially in running and how, what's important to you? First of all, it's amazing, you know, to see the uh, amount of growth I've gone within the past two years, getting the story out there. You know, whether it's me running super fast in races or not, you know, that that's important to me, but it's not my goal. My goal overall is to get that word out of who we are as Dine people, that we are still here. And with the running part, you know, it's it helps out a lot. Can you talk and explain a little bit more about folks on the reservation or part of the Dine community kind of reacting to at least that initial Hoka kind of showcase? The Navajo people love Hoka. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, even before I was getting support and help from Hoka and representing them, yeah. you know, I would see people rocking the Hokas. It's, it's crazy. For them to see, you know, a brand like Hoka out there supporting a Native American, it just made the love for the company even more on the reservation. I mean, I saw this one picture of this grandma. She's out herding sheep and she's like 80 years old. And you look down on her feet and she's wearing speed goats. I'm like, that is so rad, you know, it's crazy. And to hear that like, oh yeah, we heard the story of you guys through a runner on the reservation or a brand that is tied in with the runner that is on the reservation. It's, it's, it's amazing, you know, it's all just, educating people. <laughs> We're gonna go hit the creek. We'll see what that looks like. Rain's been talking about like finding a good spot to pull down in again and yeah. the bridge being out, it's probably a good opportunity to do that, so. So we just got to Cottonwood. We are stoked. I got about 23.3 miles, 4,040 feet according to this map. And the trailhead for the North Kaibab trailhead is 8,224. So let's round to 4,000 feet of climbing left. So cool. Today uh, has been very cool so far, but it sounds like it's about to get hard. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, yeah. Woo! Yeah. Dude, I feel unstoppable now. I think sometimes the idea of exploration comes from my desire to be connected to certain things. Getting outside is something that the effects of it, they're almost unspeakable. They really are momentous in my life. These beautiful places, they all speak to me in very similar ways. They help ground me. That presence really like helps me commune with nature, it helps me get deep within my thoughts. And suddenly like the only thing that's important is my appreciation of the space around me, my appreciation of myself, my appreciation of the folks that I care about or the people that I'm with at that point. Getting to choose the Grand Canyon as a place to be outside, there's this very real presence of ancient peoples there. You'd be in these really remote areas of the canyon and you can see examples of life and examples of folks that were like equally interested in exploring millennia before I was. That type of experience, I can't just pull out a map or a list of trails and be like, okay, so I'll do something like that again like this next time. And I think it's because I was having such a different experience and wanting that experience to truly be a reflection of like the way I felt connected to both Brandon and the beauty of that wild space. I'm like a little bit like the luckiest person in the world today. Yeah. Today 
get to spend a beautiful amount of time here. I mean that sincerely. Usually I don't qualify time with beauty, but that's what today feels like for sure. What's up? Where are we at? Where's Brandon? <laughs> All good questions that I don't know the answers to. He's busted out the poles and it was on. He just kind of took off. So honestly, I don't mind getting to go slow in this area. It's a treat into itself. So now you coach running in the local high school and the high school that you went to, right? Yeah. yeah um, okay. So like, what does it mean for you to kind of like help folks along their running journey, especially like younger folks? I go to races. I spend time in the running community and you don't see a lot of indigenous athletes out there running. And it's something that I really want to change. The native kids in general, they have so much talent. The way their body is structured is to run. The Hopi people, the Navajo people, the Diné, they were out there a long time ago. And the only way to do that was running. And, you know, they, they would trek miles every single day. And, you know, they have that background. And I, I want to see them pursue running in high school and out of high school because it, it, it gives so much, whether that's, you know, them getting out the door out of high school and seeing the world or getting an education with it or even you know them being good enough to go pro those are like the reasons why i coach and why i love coaching is to see them you know progress and to see them try to get to that level we are almost near the end so we just got to the top layer you can see trees i'll probably get a couple shots of those but that is the Kaibab layer, so uh, we are near the rim, which is awesome. My watch still thinks we only got like less than 400 feet to go, oh, maybe about 400 feet to go. So we hit 8,000, which is awesome. Love seeing like the trail down there that we came from. It's spectacular. 11 miles that way, you'll see the Colorado. 14 miles that way, probably. We would never guess, you know, it's awesome. All right, man, half a mile left. Half a mile, that's Half it. Half a mile to the county fair. What? And the rain came pouring down. Dude, it's amazing. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Get it, get it. Woo! Steps. Woo! Woo! <laughs> I'm sweaty, man. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, that feels good. Yeah. Oh, no. Roll out the quad. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do some watch stats. Uh, they're off, but I got 33 miles. Yeah, it was totally off. 25.9. Green, what'd you get with your watch? 27, I think. 27, that's probably somewhere. We well, did 15 well, miles well, or 36 well, miles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, somewhere in between there. Um, I have nine hours and 35 minutes, so that timer's probably right. Um, let's get down to the all-important calorie count. 4K. <laughs> Eat whatever I want now. <laughs> Feeling excited about that, so. Yeah, what an awesome trip, what an awesome trail. Got like lots of side trips in and uh, yeah, it's been great. So, oh, you know, it's gonna feel real good, some slides. <laughs> yeah, some fruit and some slides. It's probably the medicine I need right now. It's really cool that we're gonna have some food right now and like my mom, my sister being here. The only time I've done this before, they were able to do some support and it was awesome. And I'm super excited for that. And it's like food that I haven't had in a while, especially since living by myself. So yeah, it's really cool. I'm looking forward to uh, gallo pinto, which is rice and beans and plantains. And I think there's yuca and I think there's fruit, like everything that I want. <laughs> probably things that I don't know I want yet that they probably packed too. So I'm, I'm incredibly stoked right now. Do you want to eat? I yeah. want to eat. Yeah, yeah let's, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> 
this place has such like a storied history of like, can you do this feat, right? And I think now there's an opportunity to say, as you're doing that, here are some of the things that you can think about. Like here are some of the folks that have been through this area, have stewarded the land, have gone through experiences that you might share. You know, I think what was really cool about Brandon, he was just an incredibly open person, really humble dude, a dude that was just looking to be like, not only an advocate and a spokesperson for himself and his family and the people he knew, but for his community in a way that I thought was like truly impressive. Seeing people that live their lives in that way make me think that there's more of that I can incorporate. Now, not only do I have the responsibility, I think, to talk to folks about my experience there, to hopefully share that perspective, but also to live my life in a way that like is really intentional. I don't know how much more time I'll be able to spend on the Navajo Nation land, but I know that I will return to the canyon more often and it'll bring back that cultural connection. It'll make me think of the peoples that have traveled there. It'll make me think of the hospitality, the perspective, the kindness, the immense knowledge that these folks have that Brandon and his family shared with us. And connection with that type of experience, connection with that type of community is life-changing. And I hope that we can pass that along in a way that really resonates with other folks in the running community. I would get out of your shot, but I really I am not capable at the moment. Get in. So far, I'm, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. I think I'd rather be walking a little bit, to be honest. 